hello again. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about about uh, some tips and tricks on how to actually use social tables and find things that you need, object placement, layering, uh, color coding, and so forth. We'll start up here with the VIP tent. The uh, outline that you can see here with the red and blue dots is a tent object. It's located over here in the outdoors object section. This can be dropped over other objects. The stuff that you see underneath are uh, sofas and tables, chairs, buffets, all kinds of things. And the idea of this is to show that this stuff is located inside of a, uh, a tented area so that when uh, the people that are setting up for the event uh, look at it, they know that they have uh, two different layers that they're working in. There's the stuff on the ground, uh, the tables and chairs and so forth, and then there's going to be a tent put up over it. Uh, the dots around the edge are for the poles. The two crosses that are, I'm sorry, three crosses that are here are for inner poles. You can have a tent that either has poles on the inside of it or does not. Depending on, okay. it's a little, that's right. It's a little finicky sometimes, but if you look here in this uh, sidebar, you can decide on some uh, characteristics for your object. You can put a name, which is where the words VIP tent here come from. You can actually put the the name for the tent in. You can only do it, however, before you group the objects together, which is why it says multiple objects up here. If this tent was by itself, then you would see here where it says object name, it would have VIP tent in it. Going back to this uh, other one that I placed here, you can decide whether you want to have uh, side poles and interior poles for it, or just make it a frame tent, the dimensions. Locations of the poles can be uh, shown as well using this and the number of poles for the uh, sides and fronts and back for the tent can also be uh, chosen. And this is uh, the text size of the label, so I'm just going to put uh, something else in this box. It's come on. And as you can see, it just drops the names and the text that you type in automatically. And it'll update it as you're typing. So just put a whole bunch of stuff in there and it, it, it appears like so. An object like a tent, this is something that you want to do last because it gives you the opportunity to place all of the other objects in there first. Everything that you can see here that's sort of grayed out went first, and the tent goes over it. It gives you a chance to set your design, and then once you place the tent, you can group all of the objects together so that if for some reason you need to move something, you can pick the whole thing up and move it around. That's really convenient, actually. Like that. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to go in and... You don't have to reset Reset each. everything and move each yeah. individual chair and each individual table. Mm -hmm. So grouping definitely helps when you're looking to have something like your backstage area right next to the tent where you have multiple things in there. Yep. Phil, can you show us where you found all of those exit doors and the doors going into the tents and such? The exit doors are actually under the fire and safety section here. And they're nice to use because they have the arrow on them that points in the direction that you intend people to exit. Um, there's other fire safety equipment in here as well. If uh, you were doing a permanent installation, for instance, you could show where your sprinkler systems were or your fire extinguishers. Um, if we were getting really crazy with our music show, we would have uh, pyrotechnics. Put that there. Um, the food and beverage stuff is all here. All the objects that are inside of the tent, they're a little hard to see, but if you look, you can see the, the mm -hmm. buffet and the, the bar and the beverage. They're all located here, and 
because the way these objects are depicted, it's just a, a simple shape with um, an icon in the middle of it. Fork and knife is your buffet. Right. Yeah. Beverage. They're a little easier to place than trying to put stuff that's, um, you know, going to look, just by looking at it, you'll see that it's a table or, or a buffet or something like that. Right. So moving on to the stage area, can you show us how you put all of the seating for the 300? Because I know you have a, a good trick for us. Yeah, this was built using one of the uh, templates. This uh, is the, the whole menu for everything that you can apply to your design here. These are individual objects that are all available under these selections. But if we move over here to templates, you can place groups of tables, uh, chairs, trade booths, all, all kinds of things. And I haven't had a chance to experiment with it a whole lot, but I think that uh, you may even be able to create your own templates for objects you want to use. I'm not sure if the, uh, the free version of this supports that, but I imagine that once you start spending money on it, they'll they'll accommodate you a little more. I'm sure. But as far as this goes, placing the, the seating template, you see how everything turns green here? Yes. That means this is all grouped together. So when you use the template, it places the seats and it groups them automatically. You can ungroup them if you feel like you need to take bits and pieces out or move things around. But for the most part, you're going to want to leave them alone because not only does the template lay your seats out for you, but it'll also uh, maintain the spacing that you right, need space them out correctly. for your seats and uh, set your aisles, too, depending on how many uh, columns of seats that you need, how many rows of seats you need. Uh, and it'll keep uh, those spaced properly as well. Nice. So for your VIP seats up in the top row, how did you get them a different color than the rest? Mm -hmm. In this case, what I had to do was ungroup the seats from the rest. And then over here in the sidebar, there is an opportunity to change the colors of objects. And you can choose, there are about a dozen preset colors. Or if you're really trying to be fancy with it, you can actually use a... Uh, Create your own color. Yeah. <laughs> if you want. Very but, fancy. Uh, I, I decided to just go with the, the, the simple gray that was here. So along your stage, how did you find all that lighting and the speakers and, and all of that? over here in uh, audio visual. They're in here. Nice. So the, uh, the up lights, the speakers. Uh, We've even got the uh, lighting truss and the electric uh, hookups for it, to, little objects to depict that. And when you pick one of these up and drop it, it's only putting a single object in place. But what you can do is put objects in and just two, three, four of them at, at a time, and then you can you have to hold shift, click, drag. To group objects together. Oh, nice. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I didn't and know that. And then you go up in here to arrange, group or ungroup that. Cool. Or this button right here will group the objects together. You can see how it changes color. Oh, wow. And if you need to ungroup them, just click it again and it'll, it'll ungroup them. Oh, wow. That would have been helpful to know that <laughs> while I was <laughs> doing my project. So mm -hmm. let's go down to the... Um, the, where the food, food and, and beverage. beverage, yeah. So to color code the tables, you just did the same thing, right? Yep. You know, these are grouped together, but in order to get separate colors, you need to do it before you group them together. Oh, okay. Cool. So we'll go with this one here. It's the security one. You can see how the color is. Because the, the mm -hmm. booth is black, so yeah. that's black there. Nice. You can also see the object name says security. You can put table numbers in if you're uh, using tables. This is not a table, so there's no number for it. You can change the size of this object, and it will save the different sizes that you've worked with in this drop-down menu. So you can just pull that same size out again without having to set it using the, uh, the length and width measurements. Nice. That's convenient. So I 
think that might be all the tips and tricks we have right now. Phil did a really good job at explaining everything that he did to make this process a little bit easier. And I hope that everyone learned a thing or two for the future when they are creating their diagram. Thank you, Hi. Rachel, mm -hmm. Phil, and Cammie's here with us. So thank you everyone for coming to our talk.